We're in the midst of a misinformation pandemic. COVID vaccine lives are spreading at a furious rate and producing deadly consequences. Social media is ripe with COVID vaccine distrust. But this low-hanging fruit of inaccurate information is producing bitter consequences. Top infectious disease doctors concur that the COVID vaccine is our ticket out of this pandemic. But so many people just won't listen to science. From stories about the vaccine altering one's DNA to it making you magnetic, the fruitless and false information about the vaccine is killing people. So what will it take people to sink their teeth into the truth? Joining us is infectious disease expert, scientist, and vaccine advocate, Dr. Paul Offit. Dr. Offit, welcome back to the show. Always a pleasure to have your expertise. Thank you. All right, let's peel back the layers of all the misinformation uh, that's going on with the pandemic to clear up this COVID confusion. So let's get to our first COVID vaccine claim. The vaccine can cause infertility. Dr. Offit, your thoughts on this one. Right, so, so that notion was born of a letter that was written to something called the European Medicines Agency, which is essentially the sort of European equivalent of the FDA, claiming that the, the, the SARS-CoV-2 spike protein, which is the protein that your body makes when you're given these vaccines, that that's very similar, virtually identical, to a protein that lives on the surface of the placenta called syncytion one. Now, now, first of all, that wasn't true. To say that those two proteins are similar or virtually identical is to say that you and I have an, an identical social security number because they both contain the number five. Secondly, there were in the phase three trials, meaning those large prospective tens of thousands size trials where people either got a vaccine or got placebo, there were 36 pregnancies during those trials. Remember, half people got the vaccine, half, the other half got placebo. So if it was true that this affected fertility, then virtually all of those cases or instances of pregnancy should have been in the placebo group. But they weren't. They were equally divided 18 and 18. So therefore, the vaccine didn't enhance fertility or negatively affect fertility. Also, remember, when you're naturally infected with this virus, you also make antibodies to the spike protein. So if, if it's true that while you're making antibodies to the spike protein, you're also inadvertently making an immune response to your own placenta, then the instance of births in this country, the birth rate should have dramatically declined, given that roughly 100 million people have been infected with this virus in the United States over the last year and a half. But the answer is that the birth rate has stayed about the same. So it's just utterly false. But it's really, once you've rung the bell, it's really hard to unring it. It's hard to unscare people. Dr. Offit, thank you. Explain this one. The vaccine alters one's DNA. Right. So I think I think what scares people here just in general is that um, this is really the first genetic vaccine. So I think that scares people just that it's genetic. Um, but but here's how it works. This mRNA enters your cell and it enters the cytoplasm, which is not it's outside of the nucleus, where it then joins 200,000 other pieces of messenger RNA that are making a variety of other proteins like insulin or hemoglobin or all the other proteins we need to live. And for a few days, it will then make that SARS-CoV-2 surface protein and you'll make an antibody response to that. What it can't do is, is enter the nucleus, which is where the DNA is, because it doesn't have something called a nuclear access signal. Even if it did enter the nucleus, which it can't, it would have to be reverse transcribed to DNA, because it's not DNA, it's RNA. So in order to affect DNA, it has to become DNA, which means it requires an enzyme reverse transcriptase, which it doesn't have. Even if it did that, which it can't, it would still have to integrate itself into DNA through an enzyme called integrase, which it also doesn't have. So the chances that this can, can change or alter your DNA aren't, aren't small. They're zero. You have a better chance of developing X-ray vision or becoming Spider-Man than you do of having <laughs> it in any way alter your DNA. 